In the world of sales, there are few icons as heralded as the late Zig Ziglar. In late 2012, Zig Ziglar died of pneumonia, leaving behind a legacy of a 40-year speaking career and consultancy to Fortune 500 companies. Zig Ziglar spent his life perfecting the art of door-to-door -door salesmanship, and as such we stand to learn a lot from the man. So the book starts with Zig and his wife moving to Dallas, Texas in 1968. The first thing they do is research for a home to buy. They decided on what would be the perfect home for the proper figure, and that's when Zig's wife asked how much more they could add to that figure for the perfect house. One night, when Zig got back from teaching a sales class, his wife confronts him about finding that perfect house. Naturally, Zig asks what the price is, and he is promptly ignored by his wife listing all the pros of the house. Zig asks again, and she states the price is $18,000 above what they decided would be their maximum buying price. Zig is adamant that they can't afford the house, but nonetheless agrees to tour it at the behest of his darling wife. So while checking out the house, Zig acts like every prospect does to salespeople for no other reason than that they are salespeople. He acts indifferently. Don't let the prospect fool you into thinking that they don't want what you're selling. People have this natural inclination to put up a guard to any sort of salesperson they come across simply because of the fact that people don't like being sold. So as they walk around the house, Zig's wife paints a picture of their future in the house as if they already own it. She keeps on hammering this imaginative ownership into Zig's head because she knows that it makes a part of him believe that it's already his. He just has to buy it now. As they near the end of the tour, Zig realizes that he cannot simply say that he doesn't like the house, because he definitely likes the house. So he tells his wife that he likes it, but reaffirms that they simply cannot afford the house. This did not discourage her in the least, so she goes, I know, I just wanted to show you something nice, now let's go look at something cheap. So after Zig tells this story, he states that a quality of effective salespeople is a hardness of hearing. Though time and time again Zig repeated that they could not afford it, she didn't let that affect her. Her expectation that she was going to make the sale played a huge role in actually making the sale. And because they decided on what their maximum price was, she didn't have to make the 300000 or whatever dollar sale it was. She only had to make the $18,000 sale. Even though the house didn't come with everything that Zig wanted, his wife had pointed out to him that they could always build something that he wanted. Remember, you can have everything in life you want if you just help enough other people to get what they want. Another huge thing that Zig stresses throughout this book is that the customer must always be the one that gets the better end of the deal. If the customer doesn't win every time, you won't have a prosperous sales career. I mean, think about it. If you're in the business of car sales and you sell some chump a lemon, they're going to find out. They might not figure it out the same day or the same week or even the month, but they'll find out. And when they do, you just lost yourself a lifetime source of income. Taking the lion's share of the sale ultimately strangles the golden goose. And one example that Zig uses to illustrate this idea is that the world of sales is like the polar opposite of the world of athletic competition. In sports like soccer or football or boxing, whatever have you, the objective is to find your opponent's weakness and exploit it. But in the world of sales, the objective is to find your opponent's weaknesses and strengthen them with your product or service. And that is why the sales process is something that is intended to be done for the prospect and not to the prospect. We live in a world where salespeople are branded as the scum of the earth thanks to the work of some rather unscrupulous car salesmen and like parasites. If you take a genuine approach to acting in the sincere interest of your customer, you may miss out on the quick sales, but over the long term you will witness prosperity the likes of which no con artist can truly sustain. Play the long game. So here's another tough one that makes a huge difference in the quality of your pitch, and that's voice inflection. I don't know if you've noticed, but this is actually something that I've been kind of working on. And if you look back at my last video and the video before that and the video before that, I've been slowly making a little bit of progress. And for a lot of people, this isn't something that comes naturally. I mean, even myself, I'm a very monotone speaker naturally. So inflecting my voice takes conscious effort and practice. It's been getting a little bit better over the past few videos that I've set out, and I hope it gets even better still. So Zig suggests that you tape all of your sales pitches with live customers and you listen to them afterwards to kind of pick apart what needs to be changed and what else is good. If you've ever heard a recording of your voice, you're almost guaranteed to say that that doesn't sound like you. I've been lucky enough to listen to my videos over and over and just listen to how monotone my voice was, so it's easier for me to make these sorts of changes though. Just the same as professional sports players have to watch their replays, professional salespersons must too. In conclusion, three of the biggest takeaways from the first part of Zig Ziglar's secrets of closing the sale are don't let the prospect fool you, always put the customers first, and that voice inflection plays a pivotal role in your salesmanship. 
So you may have noticed that I'm breaking this book up into parts, and that's because it's chock full of death. If you are serious about becoming a successful salesperson, you really need to get this book. I mean, even in chopping it up into parts, I had to cut out a lot of the depth that's in this nearly 500 page book. This is easily the densest book that I've ever covered, even at the 500 page mark. So it makes a lot of sense that I've got so many people begging me to cover it. In fact, I even put off doing the video for a while because I knew there was a lot of information that I would have to cover, and that means that there's a lot of meat that I'd really have to cut out. And I hate doing that. I hate depriving people of important information. But I digress. I mean, I highly recommend this book. In the short time that I've had it, I've more than doubled my sales in my day job, so that speaks to how powerful the content is in changing your ability to sell something to someone.